Hi everyone, it's MJ, and in this video, we're going to look at creating functions in R. But let's maybe take a step back and ask ourselves, well, what is a function? And functions, these things are mini subprograms that contain sets of instructions, and they're called on when needed, and they can be repeated. Now, what does a function contain? It has its input, a set of instructions, as well as an output. Now, where are the functions in R? Well, Either you can use pre-made ones in packages, or you can create your own. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. But now, if we want to make functions, we do need a little bit of logic. So it's good to practice logic in R by trying to solve simple problems. If you don't develop your logical programming skills, then you will become frustrated with this software. So let's do a simple problem together. Let's sort a bunch of numbers from smallest to largest. Now, yes, there is the built-in sort function in R, but we want to develop our logic, so we're going to try and make it ourselves. So how would we sort five random numbers? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to generate five random numbers in R. Uh, let's say between 1 and 10, we can use the following code. My numbers is equal to a sample from 1 to 10, and we want five numbers. And this will return us a vector of 5, 10, 4, 2, and 3. Um, then, I mean, we could use the R function of sort my numbers, and we'll get 2, 3, 4, 5, and 10. But we are going to create our own function to try and mimic this. So it will kind of be of the structure. It will be my sort is equal to function. And then you, with the open brackets, you want to put in uh, your parameters. And then in your curly brackets, you're going to put in the code. But it's best to think about a function before you start typing. So we're just going to go through a little bit of the logic. And then we're going to go to our studio and program it together. So one of the ways that we can sort is to use this algorithm known as the bubble sort. So let's walk it through. Um, how the bubble sort works is you first compare position 1 and 2. So we compare 5 and 10, and we will swap if 5 is bigger than 10. In this case, it's not, so we don't do anything. We then compare position 2 and 3. So we're comparing 10 and 4, and we will swap if 10 is bigger than 4. And it is, so the new arrangement is going to be 5, 4, 10, 2, and 3. So you can see we've swapped position 2 and 3. We then compare position 3 and 4, and now this new position 3 is 10. Uh, and so we're comparing 10 and 2, and we're going to swap if 10 is bigger than 2. It is, so the new arrangement is 5, 4, 2, 10, 3. So we can see 10 has moved from position 2 all the way up to position 4. And then we compare position 4 and 5, so we're comparing 10 and 3, and again we're going to swap if 10 is bigger than 3, and it is, so the new arrangement is 5, 4, 2, 3, and 10. Now what we do is we repeat the steps, but we don't have to do this final comparison of 4 and 5, because the first cycle will have kicked the biggest number to the final place, so the biggest number is in place. After we've done the second repeat, we will then repeat for a third time, but now we don't have to compare positions three and four because now the second biggest is in place. And then we repeat again, but we don't have to compare two and three because the third biggest is in place. And essentially what we're doing this is we're doing the cycles four times with one less comparison in each. And essentially we are sorting the numbers by kicking the biggest one to the end, then reducing the amount of comparisons we're doing and kicking those to the biggest. And that's how it will eventually get sorted. So this is our algorithm. Uh, but how do we translate this into code? Well, what we're going to need is we're going to need two loops. We're going to need an inner loop, and this is going to be doing the comparing positions, and we can use a while loop for this. And then there's going to be our outer loop, which is going to be repeating the steps, and we can use a for loop. So let's maybe discuss very quickly what a for and while loop is, and then we're going to join the two together with the algorithm of swapping to come up with our function. So the for loop example. If you had to go type in R, 4 k in 1 to 10 and then say print and then in brackets k then what will happen is you like the return will be an ascending list from 1 to 10 and you can also do it in the other way around you can say 4 k in 10 to 1 print k and this will return a descending list from 10 to 1 and i recommend that you type this into r and you see that four loops they're not that difficult to actually set up now 
For our function, we want the outer loop to depend on the amount of numbers we have. So the first thing we will do is we'll say n is equal to length and then the vector that we created. Um, and then our for loop will be k in n to 2. And we then will open up our curly brackets and have all of our code. So in our example, our length is 5. So the first cycle, we're comparing four pairs. Then the second cycle, we're comparing three pairs. Third cycle, we're comparing two pairs. And the fourth and final cycle, we're comparing one pair. So we would want our k to be 5, 4, 3, and 2. And because this number is descending, this is where we're going to be getting our while loop. So let's maybe talk very quickly about a while loop. With the while loop, you want to have your parameter. So I sometimes just use i. So i is equal to 1. And then I say while i is less than 5, um, do something. So let's say print i. Very, very important that you have this thing where the i then steps up um, or changes. Otherwise, your while loop is going to go on forever because i will always be less than 5 if it stays as 1. So you want to make sure that you increase it. Um, that way, your while loop will end. And if we had to type in this code in R, we'd get numbers like 1, 2, 3, uh, and 4. Now, what we want to do is we've got our outer loop and our inner loop, and we can now combine the two together. So we can say for k and n to 2, uh, open up our curly brackets, i equals 1, while i is less than k, and then we will open up, put in our, our code over there with the dot, dot, dot. Remember to say i equals i plus 1, and then you just want to make sure that, that you close the brackets. And this is a little bit confusing, having a loop within a loop. That's why I say it's good to, to play around with this in R uh, with the print function so that you can see how the, the loops are changing. Uh, but yes, this is a complicated idea, is to have two loops, uh, one inside of each other. And now, just to make matters a little bit more complicated, we're going to talk about the swapping uh, process. So the code we're going to use is we're going to say, if my numbers at position i is greater than my numbers at the next position, then what we want to do is we want to say the temporary um, variable is going to be equal to my numbers 1 plus i. We're then going to say my numbers 1 plus i is equal to my numbers i. And then my numbers i is going to be equal to this temp. And that's going to allow for a swap in positions. So for example, if my numbers 2 is equal to 10, and my numbers 3 is equal to 4, and you know if 10 is greater than 4, then we will create this temp uh, value to be equal to 4. My numbers 3, we can now make it as 10, and my numbers 2, we're going to make it equal to the temp, which is 4. Um, and I guess yeah, we need this temporary temp uh, variable because in programming, you can't change two values simultaneously. So that's why you kind of need, need a little bit of that. But I have gone through this quite quickly, so maybe watch this again if I lost any of you, but we are going to go through it now in, in R. So let's go and do that. So let's program this bubble sort function in R. And maybe one thing that we can do just so that we're on the same page is we can set the same seed. This way we will get the same random numbers. I like the number 23, but you can type in any number that you want. Um, then what we need is our vector of numbers. So we're going to say my numbers is equal, and we're going to use the sample function. And we want numbers between 1 and 10, and we want five of them. So that's what my... So if, if we had to quickly just run this, we will set that set the seeds of 23, and we click run, and then if we bring up my numbers and we run that as well, we should get 8, 3, 10, 1, and 9. And if you use the same seed, you're going to get the same numbers. Okay, now what we want to do is program my sort. So this is the function that we're going to be creating. So we call it function, and it's just going to have the single parameter, which is the vector. So we've got our little function and first thing we want to do is we want to know the length so we want to just say n is equal to the length and we're going to say the length not of my numbers but of this parameter x remember when we run the function instead of writing x we're then going to write my numbers so that's why we're putting x in over there then as we discussed in the earlier we're going to need the two loops and the outer loop is going to be being our for loop so we're going to say 4k in n to 2. And what we're going to do is then open up the brackets over here. 
Now, inside these brackets, we're gonna have our while loop. And remember with the while loop, you just wanna start with saying i is equal to one. And then you say while i is less than k, we're then going to carry out our little function. So once we've got inside the while loop, we're now gonna have our if statement. So we're gonna say if, and now we're comparing our two numbers. So we're gonna be first comparing you know, x with i, um, and we're gonna be seeing, is this gonna be bigger than the next position? So we're gonna say i plus one. And then you can see there's a lot of, and this is the lovely thing about using the script editor, as you can see, it does this indentation for us on our own. Um, remember, we do need the, the temporary uh, variable just to kind of hold what is in the x i plus one. So let's go i plus one. Um, otherwise, we're not going to be able to, we're going to be overwriting it because yeah, x i plus one is now going to be equal to the previous one. And if we didn't create the temporary, then when we come to our x i um, is equal, we can't say x i plus one because, sorry, I keep going i plus one. We can't do it as that because then it's just going to equal itself because of this one here. And that's why we had created the temporary. So this is why we create the temp and then that's going to allow the swapping to occur. Then when you create uh, while loops, you just want to make sure that you now increase your i. So i plus one, otherwise the while loop is going to go on forever. And what we can do now is uh, we can even have it so that in our sorting function, it returns our, our variable of, of x. So what we can do now is we can just run this all into the code. And now when we come to our console, so we come down to the bottom of our console and we say my sort and we put in my numbers, lo and behold, we now get the numbers sorted perfectly. And what's quite cool is, let's say we wanted to set the seed to 25. Okay, so we set the seed to 25, and we now generate a new um, bunch of numbers. So let's get our numbers over here. We've now got seven, eight, four, one, and 10. Then we can simply sort these numbers, and we've got them one, four, seven, eight, and 10. And because we've made it so that our length is, you know, it's, it's n, we can even have a longer vector. So let's say we want to do it with 10 numbers, and we can then come in and say, my numbers two, and we now have 10 numbers, and now we can go my sort on my numbers two, and we can see that it will now even sort 10 numbers for us as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we've got my numbers at seven, eight, four, one, and 10, we've got uh, my sort of my numbers and it'll give us one four seven eight ten look you could always have used the built-in sorting function of r um, and if we come in my numbers it would have done exactly that for us but remember the point of this exercise was to develop a little bit of our logic and to see how to create quite an advanced function because i mean we had two loops and we had uh, an if statement. So quite a lot was happening in this function. It is quite a complicated one, but I think it's a great way to, to learn. I think if you can, if you can master this function, uh, you, can, you can master the others as well. So in conclusion, I mean, what we've seen is that there are many useful functions have already been created and you can access them by installing the relevant packages in R. But sometimes you will want to create your own function and look, it, it's not an easy thing to do. And that's why if you are serious about R, it's good to practice logic by giving yourself simple problems to solve. And that kind of ends this R beginner course. So then now you must be asking yourself, well, what's next? And I mean, gosh, this list, it's, it could go on forever, but there are so many different topics that you can now use R um, and explore. So we will be creating future courses, so stay tuned, watch the space, um, new things will be popping up. But if you're very impatient and you wanna watch something right now, 
I do have some videos on YouTube where I'm using Android Studio, which is also an object-oriented program, and I'm kind of creating more advanced functions around just sorting. What I'm doing is I'm creating a poker game, and I'm checking to see if I've got a you know a pair or a full house or a flush or a straight uh, and different things like that. And it's quite cool to program a game because then you have like an end result as a nice little mini project and so you can go and see what I did um, with poker of course Android Studio uh, the syntax will be a little bit different to R but at the end of the day logic is the same throughout programming but as always thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you all soon cheers